Welcome to Strictly Speaking. I'm Bimbo Uluyidi. My first guest is a lecturer in the Department of Mass Communications at the University of Lagos, Dr. Wana Samuel Akpan. Welcome Thanks, to Strictly Speaking. Thanks, ma'am. Now, you describe yourself as a scholar practitioner. Yes. And, and that really is because over the years that you worked as a producer um, and in uh, one of the national radio stations, you were also studying mass communication. From your point of view, can you talk a little bit about how the use of the English language has changed whilst you've been coming up the ladder and studying? Oh well, it has changed greatly because um, uh, social media has influenced the use of um, English language in terms of writing and speaking. Um, that art. But you must understand that um, communication itself is an art. You find out that um, there has been some high level of um, colonization of our language. I'm talking about our, our mother tongue. And I'm one of those that have called for the decolonization of our language. You've been a producer. Yes. For about 20 years. 20, 25 years. 25 years. And during that time, you've also been a lecturer at the, what is now called the National Broadcast, Broadcast Academy. Academy. Can you identify some communication gaps that you think have developed in the use of our language? Yeah, um, in the course of teaching these guys, and some of them are graduates, some of them are second degree holders, and some of them, they have passion you know, for the media industry, I've come to realize that um, they were not properly taught the art of English language, especially the verbs. Because you find out that um, some of them would want to apply when they're writing script. I asked some students to write a script on uh, King Jaja of Upubu. And you find out that there are a lot of dangling verbs, dangling clauses and phrases. And this is because they tend to translate or transfer the way they talk using their mother tongue, using it to write the script. And that's why you find out that some, uh, some producers, when they finish scripting, um, a very skilled presenter would have to re-edit the script, not because he doesn't know what he's saying or what he wants to put down, but because there is this um, dominating influence from the way he communicates. Mm. You know, using his, maybe the Yoruba or the Igbo language, using Sem to write his script, his or her script. So it all depends on, you know, where she, you know, had her orientation. Let's move the, um, the arena, the learning arena, from the Broadcast Academy to uh, the University of Lagos, where you teach and the mass comm department specifically. Now, I understand that um, the mass comm course has been unbundled. Yes. So you have the broadcast sequence, uh, sequence standing alone, yeah. uh, as well as uh, the, print, the pride, uh, right. advertising, etc., etc. Mm -hmm. Now, for the broadcasters, at what point do they uh, become exposed to the sounds of English? to proper pronunciation. Because presumably, when they come out of school and they've done their youth call, they would want to be employed. Are they employable based on their ability to pronounce words properly? Well, I can only speak for where I teach. We do a great job trying to tell these students that it's not only when you want to go on air that you can speak good English and then use your sounds properly. For example, I remember when I used to do programs on radio and even the Yoruba words, if you don't get it very well, somebody will shout at you and say, hey, I remember when trying to pronounce Agbong, but I don't know whether I've been able to pronounce it well now. <laughs> then Olasu Komi, they say, no, it's not Olasu Komi, it's Olasu Komi. Do we even have a course that um, takes care of elocution? Yes we have announcing and performance. So we try as much as possible to let them know the art of newscasting, news reading. Last week I was having my class, I told them the difference between a newscaster and a newsreader mm -hmm. and how these things are taking, you know, step by step. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, I think the other universities would also be doing the same if they want uh, their students to come out from the universities, from the four walls of the universities, and of course um, um, become employable. Dr. Akman, finally, let me just ask this question. Is there a meeting point between culture and communication? There is. In fact, the truth remains that um, the reason we communicate, <coughs> two good reasons, to persuade and for understanding. Culture cannot exist without communication and communication cannot exist without culture. I give you a very, classic, a very classical example. If you see the picture of a heart, it's a universal picture telling you that it's the picture of love. And if you see one arrow in between that heart, that tells you that somebody's heart has been broken. <laughs> okay. And then if you see everybody wearing the color black, and then with the dark glass, somebody must be uh, uh, mourning somewhere. So there is that synergy, there's that, nex uh, there's that nexus between communication and culture, mm -hmm. and there are some signs that are embedded in some culture that communicate meanings, you know, to that geographical residence. Mm -hmm. But if you take such signs or so, such culture to another realm, to another environment, it might communicate something, something very different. different. Mm -hmm. Okay. Many thanks, Dr. Akman. I'm uh, really happy that you've um, taken time to come here and uh, give us some thoughts and insights. Um, and um, I hope we'll have another opportunity in future. I hope so. Thank you <laughs> so much, ma'am.